Good morning. Look at you getting up so early to join our hike today. Good for you. This is gonna be a fun hike. This trail is only about, I don't know, stone's throw from my good friend Gary Shanling's house where he used to live. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago. He was such a good friend and such a mentor to me and so many comics, such a trailblazer uh, in comedy too, real pioneer. But I remember he used to invite me on hikes and it wasn't until I finally went on a hike with him that I realized that his idea of a hike was walking from open house to open house in some of these canyons. He loved architecture. I should have known because he only wanted to hike between 11 and two on Sundays and Tuesdays. All right, come on, try to keep up, let's go. Today we're hiking with, oh, he's ridiculous. Uh, he's a lot of fun. He's a friend, we've been doing stand-up comedy together forever. Uh, you knew him from his first stint on Full House. He was also hosting America's Funniest Home Videos at the time. He was making tons of money, let's put it that way. I saw him about a year or two ago on a play in Broadway. It was called, uh, what was it called? Could it have been Hamilton? I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, he's got a special coming out soon. Don't miss that. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are hiking with the very tall, the very funny, the very silly, Bob Sagan. Bob, do you use wet wipes ever? I, I've got one crammed all the way up my, my pooter right now. Do you? Yeah, you wanna pull why, it out? Why is that? Wanna do a magic act with it? <laughs> Makes a lovely kerchief. <laughs> do you use the same wet wipes over and over? I don't use wet wipes. <laughs> no, I have a very clean. Okay, let me tell you what I have. I have that toilet that hoses out. You've got butt. the bidet. I got. Well, it's not a bidet. It's, bidet means I don't have, you know, male parts. Um, so you actually have a, a one of those toilets. I have that one that has a fan, which is a person that just loves the fact that you just pooped. <laughs> Do you ever sit on and that they thing? Go like that. Do you ever sit on that thing when you don't have to go to the bathroom just for kind of like a, a cleaning? Well, actually, to be honest with you. I, I do it for a dental cleaning. Um, I have to stop for this. So you just put your hand You said there. for a cleaning, so that's yeah. the first thing that came to mind. Okay. I don't drink out of the toilet. My, my toilet plays music. Wow. It has a radio in it. What don't you have in that toilet seat? Poop. Ah. <laughs> I've never used it to go to the bathroom. When did we first, um, I knew you from the stand-up comedy club, but. We knew each other about 20, when did you move to LA? Um, about 40 years ago. But it was like 78, 79? Yeah, around that. Same, so that's when we met. Yeah, yeah. And but then Jay Leno told us to play PJ's, a strip club. Was he the one that suggested it? He said, yeah, it's cash, you gotta do it, it's cash. PJ's is a strip club in Anchorage, Alaska. I think it still exists, I'm not sure. I think it does, I think it does. It was a guns and pot were legal. Yeah. I yeah. told this story in my special. Oh. Special is zero to 60 and it's out everywhere now. It's on Amazon Prime now. Want to hear the joke that goes with it? Usually people wait to the end of the uh, interview to plug what they've got going on. Okay, so but we were in, we were in um, PJ's strip in Anchorage. club in Anchorage, and the strippers would introduce us. Oh, I forgot that. Yep. The other comedian who I sh we shouldn't say, he stayed in the camper with the strippers, while you and I stayed in the comedy condo. Right. And we stripped for each other. We did. God, it's so pretty. Thanks. And I don't see a, <laughs> I don't see a house. Yeah. Can you show them? Yeah. I can. You could. Yeah. <laughs> I sense that you feel very uncomfortable not talking on stage, having like a moment of uh, quietness. Well, Is that true? Not as much. And that, that's the difference, I think. I don't know, because in, in the newest special I did, I told stories about my mother passing away, and you don't rat-a-tat-tat that stuff out, you know? You, right. So if you're going to do real moments, you take your time with them. So you think you've kind of changed over the years? Well, I'm, I'm maturing, you know? You've been doing stand-up. I keep stand moving into you because I want to be on camera. I've always looked at stand-up kind of like jazz in a way. I like riffing, you know? Yeah, there's nothing like leaving your prepared material and kind of going out on that limb and seeing where that goes. But I, I, I thrive on that. That was the thing Gary Shanley used to say all the time. Yeah. That kind of, he left us with that, is to be present, be open. Yeah. Just be. And 
be, be in the in, in all we have is this moment. Yeah, I mean, which, which is kind of, which is Zen. I think Buddhism kind of a teachings. Yeah, yeah. or well, smart person. <laughs> yeah, or smart person. <laughs> uh, Are you pushing me over the edge? Not yet. <laughs> but that's coming. Show that's them coming. how close you have me. <laughs> this, is, this is not yes. the normal hiking with Kevin. No, this, this is, is a special to, hike. This is death to Bob. Um, Bob, you're wearing glasses this morning because you're out late last night. Is that it? No, no, I just black eye. No, oh. I look. I, I'm prescription. Oh, you're prescription. Watch out! Now. Watch out! This way. Oh, this way. Come on. You said I could wear them, Kevin. I asked you at the car. You know, but it's been raining for the last ten minutes. Wait a minute. You're an honest comedian. <laughs> it's a clear sky. It is clear. It Tilt is clear. up. Show them. No, you look good. You look good. Bro. I just want to prove to them you're a liar. Well, it's partly cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a liar. I'm partly, partly Chance liar. Chance of laughed. I'm Back to what you were saying. Yeah, so Gary, Gary Shanley. He had mastered a certain craft, which got him The Tonight Show and got him the offering. I was standing off stage when he hosted The Tonight Show the first time. And he got off stage and he, he fell into my arms and we made love. No, what happened was he uh, he was crying because he said, I, I don't know what to do now because this is all I ever wanted. Yeah, um, I did that after my first bowel movement. So Gary was, but he went past that obviously. He became a guy that could look at any piece of material um, and figure it out and figure yeah. out exactly the right way something should be framed and anybody with any worth who's an artist will uh, tell you that you need to have you know your story needs to be sound your reason for saying it what's the purpose for what you're doing where's does it go anywhere is it the right place it's going yeah 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 you're obviously pushing me off the cliff I've saw I've seen every one of your episodes. No one has yes. been pushed to the cliff. You haven't seen every episode because those are the ones that were pushed off. Oh. <laughs> what time do you usually get up in the morning? Not this early. What um, time would you say? Well, when, like I just finished this movie. Uh, what were you watching? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Oh, that's good. Because I wanted to enjoy something before this. <laughs> yeah. But I um directed a movie called Benjamin that I'm in with Rob Corddry and Kevin Pollack and oh, nice. Sherry Terry and Mary Lynn Rice Cub and Dave Foley. Those this are the is... people I pushed off the hike, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Do you like directing? I love it. Well, when you direct, do you listen back to your voice when you're directing? And Because I do this sometimes when I'm just directing little videos. Right. I think, wow, I'm really bossy. I should that... be a little nicer. Can we stop for this? Because I feel bad about this. It is, and, and we had a short shoot, so this was a 15-day shoot for this movie, Benjamin, and yeah. we had 15 days and a low budget, and I found myself, and I'm in it, so manic and yeah. acting in a... Because the clock is ticking. And in, in, in an aggressive way. Yeah. And then I go, wait a minute, I'm an actor, but why am I talking to these people like this? <laughs> yes. I love these people. I know. They showed up. I know. So yes, the answer is... Uh, that was a good story, but I don't think it was worth stopping for. Do you think you could ever stop doing stand-up comedy? Yes. I, I, I love directing, mm -hmm. but I don't want them to go, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Saget and an 85-year-old man comes out on stage. Yeah. And Not you. Someone no, just a guy we pay. General, yeah. But I, but I was fortunate enough to be friends with Don Rickles. Yeah. But that was his soul. So he was meant to share that gift of being one of the funniest people you could be around. Yeah. And uh, what do you think is the most similar to Don Rickles these days? Well, our, our friend Jeff Ross does his roasting. Yeah, I was going to say that. And, and, he, and, he's, and, he's, a kind, and he's a sweet guy. And, he, yeah. and, that's, and he's a kind-hearted man. Um, and anybody else that roasts pretty much is not is not always coming from not anyone but a lot of most people aren't coming from a kind place yeah yeah they're, they're doing it in the way that our society is doing it right which is taking digs and hey you got ugly teeth and then they move to the next person <laughs> yeah don yeah. Regals used to look at a husband and wife in the audience every show didn't matter if they were there or not <laughs> and he would see the husband and he would go i do have to stop for this he would go uh is that your wife? And the man would go, yeah. And Tom would go, oh. 
<laughs> I saw you on Broadway a couple years ago doing a play, and I've seen you do stand-up over the years, of course, and TV and films and stuff, but I've never seen you do Broadway, and I've never done Broadway. How thrilling was that? It's probably the biggest thrill. It's it's really hard to... I, I, I not unlike yourself, you give a thousand percent to what you're gonna do. Yeah. What was the play called? This, it was called Hand to God. That's right. It's an amazing play, had the most amazing cast. Yeah. Did you worry about forgetting your lines? That would be my biggest fear. No. No, because, and you know this because you're an actor, when you know what it's about, you can make the lines work. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be word for word. Well, it was interesting having watched that Gary Shanley documentary, one of the notes he gave everybody, is don't think about the lines, just, you know, be in the character. Yeah, yeah. Bad paraphrasing, but... That wasn't the... word for word what he said? <laughs> <laughs> Every year, Bob, you have a big fundraiser for scleroderma. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Well, it's scleroderma, which means hardening of the skin, and we actually have been doing three a year, which is a lot, and um, over 25 years, we raised $46 million. What? That is the truth, and uh, I took most of it, and I'm making a very big budget feature. Good for you, man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's sick people, but there's also movies. And it's sad that you're doing that because you were doing that for your sister, who you lost. And from it, that. It, there'll be an in memory at the end. Oh, okay. But the truth of it is, there's hundreds of thousands of people that have this disease, and yeah. it affects mostly women in the prime of their lives, and affects a huge uh, black population of the world, of African descent. Uh, some people say uh, African-American, but that just doesn't make sense because I've never heard anyone say I'm African-Canadian. When you go to Africa, do they say I'm African-Africa? Yes. And I go, I'm Jewy Jewy. The, the amazing thing is when this great lady named Sharon Monsky founded this organization called the Scleroderma Research Foundation, srfcure.org. That's my best plug. That's the thing yeah. I like to plug. Um, she decided comedy was the way to do it, which a lot of people do. You do tons of fundraisers. I do as many as we do as many as we can. Robin Williams was the first person that did it. Yeah. Saying his name makes you want to stop walking, doesn't it? When I saw him, I thought, why am I even doing stand-up comedy? But then I realized that he can't be everywhere at the same time. Almost, but not everywhere. But everybody has a place. Yeah. And, and, and you were talking about people that talk fast? <laughs> he's yeah. a laser speed. Oh, absolutely. He's, he's, he's got meteors going through his mind. I would say it's our age, but a lot of people have been passing away. Um, and we have to not be thinking about that. Do you think about death a lot? I used to, because when I was a kid, everybody died. I lost two sisters. My dad lost three brothers, all in their 40s. Um, one was 37, so I was surrounded by death. What's left for you and your family? How many? Death. Siblings? Just death. What does your fiance bring to your life that thrills you besides good looks? Um, Kelly is her name. Hold on a second, I, I need a moment. We come from different backgrounds. She comes from a blue one, mine's taupe. See? Um, does she ever say to you, Bob, you're never serious? But I know you are serious. No. I've seen you get very no, serious. No, I'm pretty serious. You are serious, and I think all of that is is kind of a cover for that seriousness. Well, I'm running from the man. I'm... You've gone to a lot of therapy, right? Yeah. I, I am, you know, Roddy Dangerfield used to say, it's all doing your best six minutes for the guard at the border. You know, you're in Germany, yeah. you're trying to cross yeah. the border. <laughs> Give me your best six minutes. <laughs> yeah. Are you looking forward to being married again? Are you asking? No. Did you bring a ring? Is this it? <laughs> this is like The Bachelor. I told you Bob was ridiculous. Um, who, who'd you tell? I told everybody. What'd you say, Bob's ridiculous? I said, joining me on my hike today, he's ridiculous, but sometimes he's serious. That's it's actually, you, yeah. it's accurate. Yeah. I'm silly is what I think. You're silly bordering on ridiculous. And boring on inappropriate. Bord no, no, not no, boring. No, no you've gone Bo into the Boring on inappropriate. <laughs> you've gone way into the inappropriate <laughs> world. Not on this hike. Do you feel yourself scaling back now because of the, um, yeah. the Me Too movement and all that? I mean, well, not because of that, but because, you know, it's kind of been brought to uh, light. I don't want to hurt anybody. Do you think it's from, like, hanging out with a lot of comics where you become so inappropriate? Because it's so easy to talk that way around other comics because there's no real filter. And then when you go out into public, people are saying, hey, man, that guy's a little inappropriate. Well, I think society has caught up with that. 
Yeah. But I think you're right. I think when I was 22 and I was at the comedy store, and, and David Letterman was one of my the first MCs that brought me up, I wanted to make him laugh. So yeah. I would say something that was completely couldn't have been called wrong. Yeah. And then he laughed out loud because this kid that looks like your dentist's son is saying something like, well, what did he say? <laughs> yeah. But that, I so it wasn't shock value. It was like, what can I do that's not coming from a bad place that seems funny to me that's off color, maybe? Yeah. The other day I sat in one of the booths in the back of the comedy store. Are you homeless? I've never sat there before. Yeah. And it felt so strange to be back there. And I was watching other comics and I got scared for myself. I thought that's what it, that's what people are seeing. Yeah. Somebody in the arena like that. Not only that, but when you look in the original room at the stage, there's a window and the curtains aren't drawn. And that window to me is always telling the comedian, there's a whole world of show business out that window that you're not in. Yeah. And that was Bob Saget. I told you he was ridiculous. <laughs> he was also serious too. Come on, come on. Don't miss this special coming up. It's so funny. Uh, and thanks for joining me. I'm gonna throw 5,000 honorary steps at you today. Only because you had to uh, put up with Bob. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Because it was cloudy and it was a little windy and, uh, and it was early. So enjoy those honorary steps. We'll catch you next time. Please subscribe, turn on notifications. Happy trails. You're running me into a chuddle what you're running me into. <laughs> you're running me into a ditch. Sorry about that.